Hello, everybody. Hi. I hope you are tuning in. My name is Sam Morielli. I use they them pronouns. I'm currently sitting on the land of the Lenape people in what is now Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I'm so excited to welcome you all to this space today um, for the first panel of the Prelude Festival. I am still slightly reeling from the wonderful and amazing um, Google Doc performance by Niall Harris and Trevor Basile. Um, truly amazing. I also got to take part uh, in May and Tio's um, meditation space this morning. Um, and I'm looking forward to closing out this first day of our festival, I guess second day of our festival, um, with May's meditation space later tonight. Um, but for now, super excited for this first panel called Revolutionary Partnerships. Um, this panel will be about, um, it's a conversation about how theater and performance institutions are forging partnerships beyond um, their own institutions with local and grassroots organizations in an effort um, to help build more equitable, just, and beautiful communities. Um, the participants will discuss their ongoing collaborations, share what they have learned, and dream about what's coming next. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. I can't wait to learn from them. And I'm gonna invite them actually on camera to introduce themselves. Um, so first we have a group from New York Theater Workshop. Um, so if y'all wanna come on, I'll dip out, but enjoy the conversation. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Alex Santiago Virao, he, him, and his. Um, I'm the Director of Education at New York Theater Workshop currently coming to you from the land of Lenape um, in uh, Madison, New Jersey, actually. And here with my colleague. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here. My name is Zafi Dimitropoulou del Angel. I use she, her, hers as my pronouns. Um, I'm the artistic director at People's Theater Project, and I'm currently tuning in from the land of Lenape and Wappinger. Hi. My name is Gavin Trinidad, Gavin rhymes with Raven, he, him, his, and I'm the Community Engagement Associate at New York Theatre Workshop, and I'm currently Zooming from the East Village, Lower East Side, also home of the Muncians Lenape. Great. Are we inviting the folks from Jack now to introduce them themselves as well? I think so. Awesome. So, like, uh, I guess, like, um, our friends. We'll get started, and then they'll come when they talk about themselves. Yeah. Great. So I'll 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 get us started just to fr frame a little. Oh, here we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Hi, my name is Sam Johnson. I am currently on the Indigenous land of the Lenape people. I am Brooklyn, New York. Um, I am with We Keep Us Safe and I have a great partnership with Jack Theater. Um, and Jordana is around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so that's our partnership with Jack Theater and We Keep Us Safe. And hi, I'm Jordana De La Cruz. I am on Lenape and Canarsie land here in Brooklyn, New York. And I am the co-director of Jack in Brooklyn. And I am very happy to be here. Yeah, I think we're starting with you, Jack, right, folks? And, and, and we see you talking about your partnership. Yeah. Wonderful. So um, I'll kick it off with, so Jack, for anyone who doesn't know, is a performance space meets civic space in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, on the border of Bed-Stuy. And Jack has been around since 2012. And Jack is all about experimental arts and about connecting with the community. And so with connection with the community, that is really an equal leg for us to all the performing arts we do in music, dance, theater, and such. And so then when the pandemic hit, um, and, this, and we all went to quarantine about March 11th, we had to cancel the rest of our season, as all of you did as well. And so here we are with our space, because Jack, we have an actual space, 18 Putnam Avenue, and we have the space that we can't be in and that we can't have all these amazing artists that we had programmed in as well. And we can't have discussions in person that we wanna have about what we're going through um, and what our industry is going through and what we personally as artists are going through and just 
as humans. Um, that's like an experience, despite if you're in art, business, or otherwise. And we just really wanted to be of service to the community because that's such a big part of our organization. And so with that in mind, we started brainstorming, thinking, could we be a testing site? Could we be a storage site for food? And trying to figure out the ins and outs, the permits. And then finally, we actually just made, we put a call out asking, you know, what, what do people need? What can we do with this space that is safe? and will benefit everyone and connect everyone. And our board member, Brittany Williams, actually said, hey, I'm with this incredible organization, We Keep Us Safe, and I'm gonna let Sam talk a bit about We Keep Us Safe. So yeah, so We Keep Us Safe started around, I think 2016, 17, around Hurricane Irma. Um, actually, Brittany Williams was um, down in Florida orchestrating, trying to get the shelters open because they had shelter in South Florida, they had closed all of these forms of housing. And so individuals were stranded and they didn't have resources. And so at that time, she mobilized us, a um, group of friends who organized in many different facets together, but we organized to get food and supplies um, to family members in Florida and Miami. And actually, Brittany actually orchestrated for 13 shelters to be reopened by the state to ensure that people had actual shelter and safety. From that point on, we started doing a lot more work around MDC, which is the um, Brooklyn Detention Center, the federal detention center that's in Sunset Park. And around that time, there was freezing temperatures and individuals who were housed behind the wall were actually given no heat. They were given no type of food for um, the quality food, um, for what that may be for the state to provide, um, but they were their quality of life was being diminished. And so we mobilized again and actually stayed at that site for about a month on the site where MDC was to ensure that the lights, the heat, and actually the quality of life was improved. I'm ensuring that also we were mandating that D. Warren um, Quay was actually being like dismissed. We wanted him to be removed because of the conditions. And if we know about um, mass incarceration and how that actually doesn't um, do anything for our communities, we, we made sure that that was a vocal uh, statement that individuals who have had that much power actually don't do anything for our people and that people who are on the ground continuously do keep us safe. And so we continue to do that type of work. And then obviously a COVID hit and when I was already doing work in Fort Greene, I live in NYCHA, um, Fort Greene um, Housing Developments in Ingersoll. And so from proceeding there, I saw that my community needed something. It wasn't anything um, to me to go and knock on my neighbor's door and ask if they needed resources. From that point on, Brittany reached out to me and said, hey, Jack, which I'm very familiar with through other work that we've done in the past, um, through community service work and also community center work. Um, they reached out, they said, we have a space available we would love to continue to do this type of work that you've already started with We Keep Us Safe. And from that point on, we started in Fort Greene and then we expanded all the way to Staten Island. Um, so we would end up doing all of the boroughs, providing food, um, obviously PPE, any type of resources that our people needed, we went out there and got it. Um, we were funded by the people. And so We Keep Us Safe's origin is a people focused grassroots um, and also making sure that any resources that we can do, we hold our principles very true, that we don't involve the state in any way. We don't want to harm our folk in any extension of how operating could be. So we've actually discontinued some relationships because we realized that the whole point of our our uh, genesis is that if we are not doing the practices of keeping po folks safe, we don't wanna put them in the hands of harm. And so that is where we're continuously looking and remodeling and structuring how safety looks like. What does safety mean? And what does that mean through love, um, political education, and also resources that are necessary for our people from the land and giving it to the people. So we keep a safe as origin is love, right? But we also want the people to take it over. And so we don't own this. We know that it is something that our people tell us what we need. We mobilize, we educate, and we let them rock out with the love and care that they need. And so yeah, so that's where we are. And so yeah, then We Keep Us Safe was in at Jack and there was just dozens of volunteers and hundreds of families were receiving mutual aid and food and Sam was uh, directing the entire 
production of it all. And so Jack had people there multiple times a week and the space was used. And we, I'm proud to say we put it all together with Sam in two weeks. So it was the type of thing that we talked about it. And then two weeks later, everyone was in the space. So it wasn't something that took forever or that we were missing opportunities to serve the community. And we learned a lot from We Keep Us Safe and we're still partnered and in the future, I hope that we can still do things like this when we have productions in the evening, when we are back uh, with artists in the space. Yeah, let me kick it over to our, our next speakers and then you'll hear more from us in the conversation at the end. Thank you so much, Jordana. That was very inspiring. Um, thank you for sharing this, this journey. Um, well, I can, I can start and speak a little bit about People's Theater Project um, and what we do. Um, and how we started this partnership with New York Theatre Workshop that we're really excited about. So People's Theatre Project is an immigrant-led anti-racist um, organization that does ensemble-based theatre work with immigrant and BIPOC communities to, to really strengthen the movement of social justice. So we are rooted in Upper Manhattan, our home is Washington Heights and Inwood. Um, we uh, believe that all people are artists in everyone in their own different ways and we believe a lot in the uh, power that young people hold. So one of the many programs that we have, it's the PTP Academy for Leadership Theater and Activism. So this is a rigorous multi-year program that is devoted to the holistic development of, of immigrant youth, um, where kids come there, they, they audition to, they, they participate in group auditions, they join the PTP program. And what it really is, is a brave space for uh, young people to be their truest selves and to grow into the leaders that they are. Um, so they come once a week when, one, when that was safe. We have our studio located in Linwood. Uh, they would come once a week during after school hours and really participate in fun, creative activities that would ignite those conversations around the community, around all of the topics that young people are you know, ready to talk about and want to talk about and want to put out um, into the world in, a, in very creative ways. COVID hit last spring and we had to, as Jordana, you mentioned, we had to just like, you know, pause everything. And the first thing that we did before moving straight into a panic mode, which of course it happened, it's very natural, it's very human, but we decided to take a pause for a second and a breath and kind of like find some stillness to first uh, make some phone calls and like call our families of our participants and ask what is it that you need right now? Like, where are you at before moving into the virtual space? That took us around like two weeks, maybe. We were able to connect um, with uh, founders of ours and, and, and the community, people from the community that help us a lot. So we were able to set up the Academy virtually, again, up after two weeks. Um, and then we realized that a lot of young people were bored <laughs> staying in. A lot of young people were needing more they were really um, yearning that like human connection. So we started very, um, like it, it just happened one Friday where we said, let's have a fancy Friday. We called it a fancy Friday and let's log in at 5 p.m. on a Zoom link and we're not gonna have class. We're just gonna hang out. What do you all wanna do? And this became a thing. The fancy Fridays became a thing where like all of the kids wanted to really participate in because it was out of curriculum and structured class and it was, um, we were cooking all together. Like we would rotate and say, okay, I know how to make quesadillas. Like let's all be on camera and make a quesadilla like together. I know, let's watch a movie together like with share screen. Um, let's have a party, like, you know, all of the fun things. Um, and we decided that now that we're still in the virtual world after some classes that we had at the park when the weather was still permitting it, that we wanna keep those fancy Fridays because these are really important for our community and beyond the work, the structured work, we want to actually have a true, um, honest human relationship with our students. And this is where I'm passing it on to my colleagues here at New York Theater Workshop um, so we can then connect, connect the dots. Thank you, Safi. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So very quickly. Um, so, so, so in essence, at, at, at New York Theater Workshop, we are interested in our educational um, and community engagement programming to um, interested in centering the voices uh, and leadership of um, BIPOC 
youth, uh, an immigrant youth. Um, and uh, we had known about uh, People's Theater Project, the amazing work that they're doing uptown, and been following their work for a number of years um, and entering in conversation this past year before the pandemic started about ways in which we could um, work together um, to serve the community that they're serving um, in meaningful and impactful ways through, you know, the creation of um, uh, arts programming, arts education programming for the youth in the area. Uh, because this is a, a sort of a central part of our goal. Um, and like in every partnership, we, we met over coffee and tried to figure out and dream what it could be. But one of the things that we do at the workshop um, that is central to our education programming is, is the notion of career exploration and career development and supporting and cultivating um, theater artists at every step of their uh, careers, right? Um, whether they want to be professional or not, right? Um, it, it's also the same belief that PTP has that we're all artists we all have a right to access theater as a human right and as a form of expression and as a form of um, activating oneself um, and the community and using theater as, not only as a, as a form of telling stories, but also uh, for social justice, right? As a tool for learning, activating, planning and strategizing as well. So we share that sort of common philosophy um, and we have access in our community to many, many, many artists. Um, and uh, one of the things that we do at the workshop, as I was saying, is a, a series of career uh, workshops for young people so that they begin to have access and an understanding of potential careers in the theater. Um, and what makes it very special uh, for us is that we involve the entire institution, right? So it's not just the education department and um, our teaching artists or artists that are that are providing services through our education programming, but the entire institution. We actually call upon everybody in the institution uh, from our marketing folks to our production management folks, costumes, um, producing, casting, our artistic folk. Um, and, and we work with every member of our staff that sort of volunteers to do these workshops um, to prepare to engage and, and meet the young people. Uh, and so Gavin can talk a little bit more about these workshops that we are doing and, and in this partnership that is actually a nascent partnership. You know, we, we've been scheming for a year um, and now um, we, we, we're putting it together um, online. Um, and so we're really excited about that. Um, as, as Alex and Zafi were saying, the way that we approach our activism and our engagement is through the importance of education. And I can speak for myself um, as a family who lived under dictatorships, it was very important for me that education is such a key in um, a moment for a young person to realize the potential of who they can become and what does it mean to be civically engaged and socially conscious um, at their age in their community. And we knew what we had was the arts and how personally for me is transforming as a young brown immigrant uh, from a young brown immigrant family to find myself and find the language or languages to describe where I am now. And so um, what I love about the work that we're doing, it goes hand in hand with both of our missions. And as Alex was saying, is that it's an investment from the entire institution. It's not siloed in one department working with only a few people. Um, it's truly a buy-in from every single person in both institutions and knowing that we're here for these young people um, who have trusted and given up like so much of themselves um, to, 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 to learn and to, be, to cultivate and is truly trying to create a community that, um, and space for them to flourish. And so, yeah. One last thing that I wanted to say because I think I forgot to do the so this year, Fancy Fridays will be those workshops led by New York Theater Workshop. So each, each Friday of the month, the students of PTP Academy will be taking a different masterclass on a different topic. So we're starting this November um, with yeah. costume design, right? Yeah. <laughs> with costume design. And then after the completion of it, they'll get a certificate that they also have attended a masterclass on 
um, you know, it's top, like on costume design and development and production and all of the aspects of the theatrical journey. That's a little bit about, about us. Should we open it up for conversation and, 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 and thoughts about um, partnerships um, and, uh, and how we put them together? Yeah, one of the things that I, I, I sort of wanted to convey in, in terms of our partnership um, is that, uh, you know, w one of the things that, that was really important to us is that, as I was saying before, that our sort of mission and our goals aligned, right? And that there was a clear philosophy um, that we sort of both had in terms of the kinds of uh, work that we, that we wanted to do and the ways in which we wanted to serve young people, right? Um, uh, for, from our perspective at New York Theater Workshop, we, we, we didn't want to be in a position, we wanted to be of, of service to the community and how can we share our community, how can we share our resources, how can we share uh, our connections um, in the theater world um, for folks to have access, for folks to have information and resources and, you know, uh, meet um, artists. Um, that are doing the work. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the things that was really, really important uh, um, that, that we sort of learned is really important for PTP um, is the opportunity to create opportunity for the young people uptown um, uh, and kids uh, to have access and sort of envision a possibility, you know, the possibility of a career in the theater, the career in the arts. And some of it is, lack of access to professional, uh, you know, producing companies. Um, and, you know, at the workshop, the emphasis has always been on uh, cultivating a community first and foremost, entering into conversation and then providing access um, for folks to develop, learn um, and hone their craft, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, we were interested in a partnership, but we didn't want to impose. We didn't want to impose that that would be the, the sort of the, the the um the goal on the other end but it's so wonderful that that's that aligns so much with what uh people see a project wants to do which is provide access to youth that um otherwise without the program wouldn't have access to to some spaces around the city what are some of the things you have learned in your partnership um uh folks at jack and we see I'd say that I think just something that I feel like I already know, but it just it's constant communication is very important. But that's something I, I feel like we we knew beforehand, but this was just a different way of communicating. And just in terms of um, Sam, I know could talk about how many people that she was coordinating through all of this. And Sam was our point person. So we were talking to Sam, but Sam, I feel like was talking to dozens and dozens of people. Um, and so how to figure out how to connect and support her when she had all of that weight. And so something that we tried to do was to take over um, the, the buildings around us. So anyone in the buildings around us who wanted um, or needed support or anything, tackling that and figuring out who could support that process so that Sam had less to focus on across the street and could keep going in words outwards. Um, that was something that I felt like was successful. And it was just an exciting part of the growth because that didn't come till later having the, our actual neighbors across the street from us that we see all the time at Jack um, receiving and, and meeting for mutual aid. I would say for me, the one thing that I've always wanted um, was to really hone in healing and love and also the practice of art. And what that means in my perspective is just that one thing we can do is just like Jordana was saying, reach across the street and like show that 
sometimes institutions may be very isolated, but Jack has done a great, amazing job in making sure that everybody in the neighborhood knew about us, that it was really transparent. It was an open door policy and it was really just community building more so than I've seen before. And the thing that I've also learned was that having true partnerships that truly believe in the community and want to really do right by the community consistently was also a driving factor. And yeah, I was talking to many, many people, but I never felt alone. And I never felt as if it was an isolated um, project that I was in a silo by myself. And it was something that I just had to meet my deadlines or make um, the appearance of the space better. It was, all, it was already a warm space. And I think that goes to the intentionality of an artist space to create that before you get into it. Um, and you just kind of blossom. And so that was one thing that I learned that is, I would hope that other art institutions would be able to you know, mimic um, creating a safe space, creating a warm space, but also an intentional space that even when you don't have a, um, a show or premiere, that people can still come in and either give ideas and be inspired by that um, and or just wanting to figure out where their place is and be able to lean um, in support. So that was one a great thing that I, I learned, but I also am consistently inspired by our partnership. Sam, something that I really, that like that hooked onto me that what you just said um, that resonates with me is, you know, to, to you have to create a, such a beautiful partnership, an intricate partnership of understanding and trust to provide consistently to the, and that's, I think that's the difficulty that I, I the challenges I've learned within this position. What does it, what is it, what is the relationship of a theater of a theater institution to its community and to our local organize and local activist organizations and how can we create a relationship in which it's reciprocal but is sustainable consistent can be sustainable and actively support um, yeah I, I think it, especially at this time what does it mean especially at COVID um, just specifically for a New York Theater Workshop and PTP, though we've been in conversation, you know, we we wanted to start doing something at, at the time COVID hit. <laughs> like we we had to call. It was like, oh, we have to change plans. Um, we're not going to do that workshop. And and it, and and I and I'm bringing it up because we we are at the moment because we we are in the you know the infancy of our collaboration. We are actively building that relationship that. Uh, Jordana and Sam, you have and your institutions have, and it's so beautiful to see where, you know, how it's grown. And we hope we, we get, you know, we're building that, like I aspire to be in that collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And I was gonna say, even at this early stage of our partnership, we've already been inspired by, by um, how PTP has responded to the moment, you know, when, when uh, in the COVID crisis, um, with with their academy for 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 this young folk, you know they were they, they were really um, uh, committed to putting it, you know, taking the academy online, right, and committing to these young people. Um, and you know they have a a, a, a staff person uh, uh, that is a youth advocate, right, who who works with the youth, reminding them, engaging them, making sure that their families are okay, making sure that, that, they're, that they're accessing their resources and, and, and sort of engaging them in that consistency. That was inspiring, right? Um, and it's inspiring. And, and, it, and it, it, to me, it was inspiring that they were trying to figure out how we take this intricate curriculum online that it inspired us at the workshop to, you know, uh, 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 to create a program that was online. Um, um, and so um, we are doing um, a, a program at the workshop called the Youth Artistic Instigators that is inspired by the way we are um, uh, sort of uh, uh, doing our season this year, which is online virtually uh, and perhaps at some point socially distanced, but we sort of um, went to a community of artists um, and in essence, um, ask them, send them a provocation and, and ask them to, to dream um, work for the moment, right? Um, and that we would, you know, listen to their ideas and, and produce their ideas of, of theatrical work that, um, that was speaking to the moment, both in terms of the pandemic and the moment around sort of racial justice, right? And so that was inspiring for us, right? 
could we provoke students, young people to create work about the moment? Yes, could we do it online? Wonderful. Um, and, uh, and then now that we're in the virtual space, uh, could we open it not just to New York City youth, but youth across the country? Um, and so our program has you know, young people from all around the country that are creating together around notions of transformation, social change, and social justice. And in a way, you know, we're inspired by so many things, but inspired by PTP's decision to say, well, we're gonna take, we're gonna move on with our academy, we're gonna provide the service, and we're gonna do theater, we're gonna do theater with our, our ensemble of young people online, right? It's gonna be challenging and difficult, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Um, so we're also in the midst of exploring that and, and doing it. <laughs> Yeah, so many things resonate with like with that we're saying. I wanted to kind of like go back to uh, what Jordana you were saying about intentionality. That that's that's like the um, one of the key things that makes a partnership be strong and therefore sustainable. And um, I I've also been very inspired, and in I know that that was part of why PTP was also very interested. Um, collaborate in collaborating with New York Theater Workshop beyond the fact that we know our missions are very aligned and our core values as well. But it's amazing to me how like we are all of us respectively rooted in our communities and community is very important. And at the same time, these partnership, partnerships now are kind of like crossing borders, if that makes sense. Like geographically, we're partnering with people from different communities that have those similar, you know, missions and similar kind of scope of work. So we, we sometimes make fun with our students. We say, when we were having the conversations about actually being in New York theater spaces, uh, in New York theater works of space, uh, we would be like, uptown travels downtown and we're gonna get to see you know, how theater happens downtown. We do it like this. And then we would invite them maybe to lead a workshop, a workshop in our studio if that's possible. So downtown folks can see how we do it uptown. So I, I, I'm very interested in that and how we can, you know, be, stay true to our community, but intentionally also sometimes like collaborate with people from other communities across, for us is now New York City, but um, as you were saying, Alex, you are now doing it across the country. Um, so that's something that is very um, inspiring for me. Yeah, that's definitely something that uh, has happened that I've, you know, also witnessed through this pandemic is that so many, uh, arts leaders and organizations are all connecting that I hadn't been connected with before. And so people I had known about, um, like y'all have been excited about, but it's different than, you know, talking to you multiple times a week on Zoom because we can do that now. And bouncing ideas off each other and really creating this larger web and community with all our many communities that are serving specific neighborhoods. And it definitely feels maybe it's just because we're all going through the same thing together, but I feel far more connected to different theater organizations and different activist organizations than I did a year ago. Yeah, I hope that, you know, I hope that we, you know, I know we're all zoomed out, you know, in a way that, you know, we spend our days on, on Zoom and, and then do multiple programming and, 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 it, and sometimes it's really, really difficult and challenging and physically demanding and intense. Um, but one of the, 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 the wonderful things as you're, or you're mentioning is this, this connection um, with folks, right? And I think, um, you know, I'm already sort of seeing a future, you know, hopefully without COVID, um, but we're uh, connecting like this um, across borders and barriers and regions. Um, uh, it's gonna hopefully going to stay. So it's no longer, um, that it would no longer be okay to say, well, you know, you cannot participate in our programming because you are miles away that there is a way in which we can um, collaborate um, in many different ways and many different uh, mediums. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so that's exciting. And I think there's a challenge, for, you know, moving forward for um, organizations, theater organizations, presenting organizations to, to maintain some of those connections that they have created virtually. Um, and how do you, how do then you transition those to in-person programming as well, but also maintain, you know, um, some of the accessibility um, qualities of online programming, virtual programming.
Sam, there was something, sorry, I just really love what you said earlier. There was also another thing that I wanted to bring, which is connection to what has been, what has been said about, I mean, specifically in this time, the way that we've all come together and work together during the pandemic and during the uprisings and um, creating discourse and safety. You, you spoke specifically about the possibility of space for community when you go into an art-centric slash socially conscious space when they come together. And I think we've all worked in person during, during this pandemic as well, physically. And I also wonder how everyone feels about creating that community and continuing this partnership and creating that space of safety and expression online. Like, how do we continue to serve these communities online? It's just, it, it's just a mo it's something that just popped, but it's a challenge that I've been facing. How can I, I know what I could do in person and I, there's a certain feeling, there's a certain type of energy I get. And then how do I bring and ensure that safety and sense of community online to those who can access it and need to access it via that way? Yeah. Well, for me, I, I'm now just getting comfortable with people being in my home, <laughs> literally, <laughs> you know, they're literally on my sofa and seeing my cats run around. Um, so it has a sense of breaking the fourth wall, right? And understanding that in order for me to keep any, any phrase if I say safety, I really mean what is the level of comfortability that you and I can exchange, right? What is the level that we can have a, a conversation that we can easily turn off our camera? We can shut down at any particular time. We have that still the same autonomy if we were in person, um, but definitely what does that look like as far as what you're mentioning, uh, Gavin? when you're just kind of doing 17 different things and you want to maintain that sense of sincerity um, to the exchange. And so I think for the zoomed out folk, which all of us are, um, we still have that comfortability of knowing that we are in a space that you have to invite me to, right? And there's, an, there's always that invitation and the discourse of knowing that invitation is always open, whether we choose to or not choose to. And there's also patience. I think we've gained a lot of patience through COVID um, with ourselves first and then with others. And so the thing that I'm learning when it comes down to maintaining a form of safety is really what does my own comfortability, I'm more aware of myself. I'm more aware of the space in which I occupy. Um, a lot of Zoom calls are now being more recognizing in the land in which we're in. And we're being more conscious about how we occupy space within the space that we thought was our own. And when we're always inviting folk in, we have that moment of saying, okay, well, I have a, nine people right now in my living room <laughs> and they're in the space and I'm able to take time and patience with myself about exchanging what is comfortable for me. And it's not that I'm, I'm gonna be frozen but it's just, I have, I have more patience. And I think for the exchange with young people, um, that's what we've always wanted from them. And we've always wanted an exchange of just being relaxed and just doing a breathing exercise. And then, you know, maybe doing some fun, you know, warm up games. And so this is kind of an opportunity where family can be engaged and that the moms and the dads and the partners of their lives and the people in engage with them can see the, the vibrance. They can see the energy. They can, because they have never seen it before. They've never been able to go into that classroom and see them do a Zoom game or see them talk about colors or some like vocal exercises and see the joy that it brings. Um, and so I think that there's very, very many ways in which we may be impacting young people or people in our community, but we're also impacting those who view them as well. Um, and so that's the way that I take this away. Because I know when I was, when we were doing mutual aid, I was only kind of thinking about meeting the need, right? Meeting the, the, the where we're not at. But then I realized that people were watching me consistently. When I'm in my house, when I'm not in my house, I'm going to the corner store. And that's the way that I built a lot more community relationships because people were like, you're just hustling. What are you doing? How are you doing this? You know, and I would say, Jordana, I have 17 pallets of potatoes. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but you know, and then I'll get, um, you know, community members from across the street saying, I see you do this. Where, where can I fit in? And so, and they're also opening their homes to me. I've been in 17 million homes and I'm like, I'm just, 
I would love it. Um, where we didn't have that before. So COVID has taught us how to be patient with ourselves. And I think with the youth, they're also being patient with you as you work through this with them. And you're not judging where they are in their home and the fourth wall is being broken consistently. So that's my perspective to it. Yeah, that has been so important for us to, to not judge, right? Uh, you know, uh, the young people in their homes and how their access and their space, you know, so they're, they're so conditioned in our educational system, right? And told to behave in particular ways. But what, of course, what happens when you are, when your home is your school, when your home um, is your theater space, your creative space, all of those sort of things combined, and then you're inviting folks into your home. Um, uh, uh, we have to undo those expectations. Um, you know, not that we always had them, but but it's hard for them to undo those expectations as well. And so we have to create a space where they feel safe being themselves, right, um, with others. Um, yeah, that resonates, absolutely. Yeah. What are you looking forward to in your own partnerships? Oh, Safi, you had something to say. Yeah, I jumped the gun. No, no, no. That's it. I just wanted to add, um, to share the, a moment, because at PTP, when we start the classes, we always start with the devising of the brave space agreements. How do we move from, like, safe also to brave space also because because it's theater and and for all of the other reasons um and i now that we're having this conversation i did notice that a big part of what goes under our contract of brave space agreements when it's being uh devised online you can see the difference you can see how the young people are putting different um sentences they're forming different sentences when we're doing this activity of the brave space agreement in comparison with the one we're doing it in person in our studio. So now what you're describing so nicely, Sam, is bravery now means also literally, I wanna be brave enough to not think that people will judge me if you, know, you see my kitchen behind and we just had like lunch all together and you see our family mess and we're all like, yeah, that's how all of our kitchens look right now. So don't worry, we're not looking at this. <laughs> we're you know here focusing on this vocal activity. So it's, what you what you said so nicely like the young people know that and I just see it, it's beautiful to also see that in action in the activities how now even bravery is being redefined as a concept in their minds when we're talking about it Alex you had a question sorry to you're mute we haven't learned yet after you know um uh yeah, so the question was, you know, we have 15 more minutes or so of time together. And, 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 and you know, it's just the, the question is like, what are you looking forward to in your partnership, folks, moving forward in terms of the, the work that you're dreaming to do together? That's easy for us. We're at the very beginning, so everything is a dream. Um, but uh... yeah, I mean, I'll say because, yeah, we're very much not at the beginning. Um, but I would say that when so i'm looking farther down the line but when we are back in the space with artists i'm really looking forward to figuring out how we keep up partnerships and how we keep up this partnership with sam and how we um bring in someone that sam's really excited about working with because at the end of the day we do have this space and we do have our performances in the evening so if people aren't in tech we have the space and we'd rather be uh, using it with the community and serving those around us than renting it. And so I'm really excited for kind of like tackling that challenge. Um, I think it'll be a really, I think it's gonna bring about some really beautiful things and partnerships um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be new. So. Yeah, I'm excited about that as well. I mean, I come from a background of working in community centers um, and being able to have um, some access to space. And so I no longer work in that space anymore. And so being able to be with Jordana and Jack and having like great innovative ideas to start bringing out to the you know, community and also thinking about how do we really maximize um, the conversations of just sitting and being in, in community with each other um, is really great. I would love, um, I think, you know, if we, once we get there, I'm always 
future projecting, right? Uh, once we get to a point of COVID being manageable, that we're talking about what health really looks like and what our wellness looks like, um, mental health looks like, um, people um, talking about their feelings and emotions and being able to have like, not necessarily a lounge, but just an open dialogue of saying, this is where I'm now able to transition into as we're going through multiple different phases of our personal life, as well as our professional. Um, and when community members are having um, maybe a moment where they just like, I'm confused that they find another space that they can go to um, and just breathe um, and being able to go into um, whatever their day is requiring of them, but definitely an open chill space that they can do um, like Jordana is mentioning. So that's something I'm, I'm looking forward to potentially. Just to add as a curator and the co-director that also gets me really excited about what artists are having this conversation, what artists have been and are focusing on health and what that means and what that installation looks like or what that play looks like or what that collaboration with We Keep Us Safe or the volunteers is. So that's that's a whole nother thing that's lit up that I'm now really excited about in 2021 to really start diving into because there are, artists have been working on this, but they haven't been the ones that we've been focused on putting in the forefront, you know? And so now we're very much on focused on health. And so I'm really excited to, to find those people and to collaborate with them. So hit me up. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So oh. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that I've been reflecting on is that I think this moment has taught us um, on a number of fronts that, um, Theaters and cultural organizations um, uh, should, you know, should really very specifically, you know, um, you know, say what their values are and sort of uh, be accountable to those values and live to those values. And if those values include serving the community, right, um, it means that there's a civic responsibility. Um, and if you want to be a, 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 a civic institution, a, a public institution at the service of community, then, um, then, then you have to, to be intentional and, and, and constant um, and make space, literal, make space in your space physically um, to welcome community without any sort of uh, preconditions. Um, and engage with them in a conversation about what their needs are. And then of course, in the virtual space, create space as well there and make sure that folks have access to it. Um, if you want to engage them, just don't put out an invitation and expect that folks will come. Uh, make sure that, 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 that you're engaging and partner with communities that can also help uh, and have the philosophy of meeting folks where they're at. Um, in person and online. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to, you know, in a non-COVID space, also making space within our space intentionally uh, for community to use that space for their expression and their growth and their learning. Yeah, I, yes, I'm looking forward to all of the things mentioned already. I think specifically for the partnership that we're about to start, I'm very excited um, about the potential of keep fostering that sense of belonging for our students, which is so important for, you know, our immigrant community. Um, that's that's I guess what I meant also before when I was saying about that uh, joke that we make now with the students like we're gonna like uptown travels downtown. It's just um, that sense that you know New York Theater Workshop represents. It's very known. It's very well known in the theater community here, and and that sense of belonging, like our kids knowing that you know, I, I belong there too. It's not that distant place that I never go to because it's not for me. And I don't see plays that sound and look like me. I think I'm very interested in like, keep redefining what access means, what equity means and what um, that sense of belonging can mean for our young artists. A lot of them come to the Academy because they truly wanna do that as their career. And I know just for myself, like from my background, being an immigrant in this country, I know that I, you know, I can't, I can go into equity because I, they, they don't allow if you don't have a green card, for example, it's not for if you're not a citizen. So that's something already that we discuss these kind of things with our students. We're, we're having these conversations from now, even though they're still in middle school and high school, we know that the way systems have been functioning, they're not actually welcoming for a lot of folks. So. For me, this is a beginning. This is like a start of that 
keep the work of keep deepening that sense of belonging that I belong here. Of course, with the respect of knowing how much space we occupy and how much space we share and how much space we, you know, take, take more space when we have to and like take a step back when we also have to. But um, yeah, belonging is what I'm really excited about. I guess this might be jumping the gun, but what excites me about is thinking about in the next several years, especially the Academy, for those who don't know what drew me personally to PTP is that in the Academy, it's, it's social justice oriented and it creates a space in which students are wrestling with complicated nuanced issues of, of immigration, sex and gender, racism, anti-blackness. And, and it's such some, something that Sam had said earlier was like the creating space for healing, recuperation to then push on to do work. And I'm looking forward to these young people and participating and the staff participating in that cultivation of these young people, realizing there are, you know, the, the beauty and the necess how necessary it is for artists to be civically engaged in their communities. Um, especially PTP is very much about, you know, serving um, the Washington, wa like the neighborhood of Washington Heights and Inwood. For us in the East Village, you know, for New York Theater Workshop, Lower East Side, the village, you know, Alphabet City, where I was born and raised. And so it, I'm looking forward for these young people to, you know, like learn from us and we learn from them and collaborate and see what they do. I think I might be, but that's the dream, like that, you know, when you, yeah, when you give the tools to young people and you create a space of nurture and giving them the possibilities to dream beyond what was, a, like, what they believe was afforded to them and they could just dream the impossible, it's, I'm looking forward to that beauty, that, that beautiful moment, yeah, yeah. Something yeah, the verb, I just want to piggyback yeah, go ahead. Mention, uh, uh, Gavin. Um, when you're talking about like the spaces for healing, I'm thinking of all forms of resistance, right? What does that really look like when we're talking about healing? Because that within itself is a is is a revolutionary break, right? Um, and thinking about how are our partnerships really pushing that needle to ensure that we are consistently innovative about resisting what the social norms are, resisting the conversations that everyone wants us to really have, but we're not really talking about, um, and thinking about how to expand the way that we are right now. Because if, if we know history, it repeats itself. And if we know how we always are thinking about social constructs, they're always meant to be broken. And so are we really giving our communities the tools that are essential for when the next COVID breaks, right? Are we really doing political education that's really giving our communities and ourselves a well-versed and well-rounded opportunity to continuously push that, that, that obvious um, conversation, but to push it even harder. And as artists and as social um, justice organizers, agitators, what are we really doing to make ourselves uncomfortable? Um, so that the state or other forms of oppression are no longer able to continuously to put us in these spaces again. And that even in an artist space, the uh, constructs of what funding looks like. What is that? How are we resisting those 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 things, right? How are we breaking those chains so that when we're talking about community engagement, that we're really giving it to the people to orchestrate that and to create the buildings and the spaces that are safe, truly intentionally, without you know an art fund saying, "Oh, you can only do three shows," uh, you know, or you know some type of funder saying, "Hey, you can only have four artists." And I need to know who, what, when, where, and why that artist is what it is, right? So I think that where my hope is, is that we are breaking a lot of these change and having this dialogue and conversation, but our communities are also being very influential in how we do it because they're at the front line with us, they're on the ground with us, and they're helping us do what I know as Sankofa going back to where we were realizing what was valuable and bringing it back to our people so that we don't repeat the, 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 the faults of our history. So that's one thing as well. I love that, Sam, because our community members are the stakeholders. They, like, our future is truly based on what they want and what they need. And so, yeah, just seconding. Thank you. 
Yeah, the people should have the means of production, right? You know, Augusta Boal, my mentor would say, would say uh, theater is a weapon and it's the people who should wield it <laughs> for their own liberation. So I mean, it's a, it's a long task, but it should be an intentional task. I think we're at two minutes. Yeah. Well, thank you all for being here today. That was very inspiring. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for the conversation. Um, and uh, we wish you luck with everything. Um, be safe and healthy. Sam. Hi, I'm here. I was like, I was like, oh, you still use those two minutes, please. I'm living <laughs> for this conversation. Um, thank you all, truly, truly, truly. Thank you all so much for just, I'm, I'm so grateful to have witnessed this. Um, you mentioned midway through the conversation, you were talking about Zoom fatigue. And I think um, it's converse, I hope you all feel really energized by this conversation. I think it's conversations like these and days like today and this festival that really energize me. I truly, I'm so grateful. Um, and I know, I think the thing that I miss the most about Live, like the liveness of theater and being in space and just like being able to gather is that mutual energy share and me being able to like, like for you to, even though I was off screen, let me tell you, I am living, okay? I've been snapping, screaming, texting, the producers, we're all having our own conversation about your conversation, learning from each other. It's truly, truly so wonderful. And I know everybody at home is celebrating you. So I hope um, that you leave this space feeling energized, feeling celebrated and with lots more questions. I'm just so excited to leave this space thinking more deeply about what it means to be in partnership. Um, I appreciate you calling Sankofa into the space, Sam. That's something that deeply resonates with me too. Um, so yes, thank you all truly for joining us today. And I think that's that on that. So we'll close out this space. Um, I hope you all will join us for the rest of the festival. For everybody watching out there, I hope you'll join us for the rest of the festival. We have two more performances tonight, um, one at 8 p.m. So you have a half an hour break. Um, it's Baldwin and Buckley at uh, Cambridge um, in partnership with uh, the Elevator Repair Service. And then May Ann Tio is having a meditation space at 10 p.m. Um, with, I hear, a guest. So I hope you'll join us. I hope everybody at home will join us. I'm excited for it. And we have so many more days. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you.